Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm so excited to talk with you all about something that is so near and dear to my heart. We are talking about body suspension. So body suspension is the practice of piercing hooks through the skin and then hanging off of those hooks. Body suspension also covers the umbrella of pulls, which is a similar process of piercing hooks through the skin, but then pulling against someone from those hooks, commonly called energy pulls or flesh pulls. Just a quick content warning that this video is going to have discussions of things like body suspension. There are going to be pictures of suspensions being done and supplies for suspension. And if that is not something that you're interested in or comfortable with seeing, don't keep watching. A few weeks back, I put up a poll on my channel and asked if y'all wanted me to talk about this and overwhelmingly the response was yes. Um, almost 90% of you were like, please make some body suspension content and that makes me so happy because suspension is so unbelievably precious to me. And just a quick plug, as an aside, if you're in the Philadelphia area and you're interested in body suspension, my team, Skinthesis Suspensions, will be putting on a performance on April 16th at the Philadelphia Armory as part of the Oddities Expo in Philly. It's a really fantastic event if you want to come see cool, weird art pieces, support a bunch of different local artists, and see some live body suspension, I definitely suggest coming out. I will actually be performing as part of this event. It will be my first public suspension performance in over five years. Oh gosh, even longer actually. Um, and I cannot wait to see you all. The performance starts around 1 p.m. Uh, and if you see me there and you are from YouTube or TikTok or things like that, um, please come say hi. I cannot wait to meet some of you. Back to the video, body suspension. So like I mentioned earlier, body suspension is the process of hanging through hooks pierced through the skin. And here are a couple pictures of different suspensions. Now the first question most folks have when it comes to suspension is, does that hurt? And the answer is yes, of course it does. We're putting big hooks through our skin and hanging from them, that hurts. But it's not nearly as painful as you might imagine. And things like getting my wisdom teeth removed, having my kneecaps tattooed, and climbing Mount Leconte in Tennessee were all things that I did that I thought were way more painful than any body suspension I have ever done. I would compare the pain of body suspension more to the pain or discomfort of doing things like a really intense workout or some more extreme sports. Your body is feeling some pain during this process, but it's not pain because you are at danger or at risk of being harmed. It's pain because you're doing something that is painful or uncomfortable. A runner who's on mile 10 is feeling discomfort in their muscles, but not necessarily in any danger, and suspension is very similar. It's also worth noting that outside of getting the hooks actually pierced and placed, and the first few minutes of suspending, the rest of the process is typically not very painful. Those few moments are definitely intense, but for me and many others, once we've been up for a little bit, the hooks get very comfortable, and honestly, it's more comfortable than the harnesses that we sometimes practice in. Those harnesses hurt and chafe. Now, if it doesn't hurt, a lot of folks wonder, what does it feel like? And I can't speak for everyone who suspends, I can only speak for myself, but for me, the first few minutes that I am in the air feel kind of like a burning sensation, and a lot of times we call that burning in your hooks or adjusting to the feeling. And after about five or so minutes, it just feels like a pressure sensation in the area where I have those piercings. And honestly, it's more comfortable than getting tattooed in that same area for an hour or two. Legitimately, I would way rather suspend from most parts on my body than get those body parts tattooed. Following up the does it hurt, the other question is always how does that not tear? And the thing is, human skin is amazing and incredibly strong. The hooks and tools that we use are rated for weights of 200 pounds and up on one single hook, but our skin is even stronger than that. And the example I like to use, uh, sorry to my vegan followers out there, um, but is meat processing or animal processing, wherein they're taking the carcass of something like a deer or a cow and they are hanging it oftentimes on just one or two big hooks and then they're doing butchering or storage like that. And cows weigh a ton, one ton sometimes. The average cow is 1,200 pounds. 
and there are people who are putting those carcasses on one single hook for storage or for processing. So it's no surprise that we're hanging from two or six or 20 hooks and our skin is totally and completely fine. Now that being said, it would be ignorant of me not to mention that tearing and damage to the skin is a risk of body suspension and that's something that anyone who is suspending takes into account and is warned about. But playing football has risks of concussion and skiing down mountains have risks of broken limbs. Anytime you're doing anything that is a more extreme physical activity, there are risks that come along with it and body suspension is no different. Once we get through the questions about does it hurt and how does it not tear, a lot of times people's next question is why on earth would you do something like this? And that is the question that I really love to get to talk about. And the answer is going to be unique for every single person who suspends. But for me, suspension is one of the most empowering, cathartic, healing, just intense, beautiful things that I have ever experienced in my entire life. There is a moment in each suspension when you are so close to being off of the ground and the only thing that is standing between you fully flying in the air and staying on the earth is your mind. Most of your weight is already on the hooks. You've got one tiny big toe on the ground and it is just your brain telling you, you can't do this. It's going to be too painful. It's going to be too difficult. This is too hard. And in that moment, you have to choose choose to be stronger than your brain, stronger than that negative voice telling you that you can't and make the conscious decision to pick your feet up off the ground. And when you do, something absolutely magical and transformative happens. And when you do eventually come back down to the ground, those choices that you face in your everyday life that you thought were hard seem like nothing in comparison to the choice to pick your feet up off the ground, trust that you could handle it and fly. And I have seen people move across the country to chase their dreams, leave abusive relationships, start their lives all over, develop a healthier relationship with drugs or alcohol or their body. Because the choices every day that seemed insurmountable in their life to do those things before seemed like nothing after they had chosen to take their feet off the ground and fly. No choice in their day-to-day -day life was as hard as that choice to have faith and trust and confidence in their mind and body and suspend. Beyond that, some people suspend just to prove that they can do something as intense and wild as hanging from their own skin. Some people suspend as a form of art, as a way to create beautiful images and videos to tell stories, capture emotions and experiences. Some suspend like it's an extreme sport to see what they can pull off, what tricks they can do, how long they can hang, what can happen. Some people like to do suspensions for performances, to feel the rush and awe of the crowd looking at you like you are a superhero for doing something like this when you know that this is just another Sunday for you, to awe people with what the human body is capable of. Others suspend in mourning. I have done suspensions because I have lost people in my life or to commemorate transitional periods in my life to other things. Some suspend as a way of taking back their agency, whether it's after trauma or loss, or I have many friends in the suspension community who are chronically ill or disabled and suspend as a way of showcasing the potential in their body as opposed to dealing with things that have kept them on the ground before. I have one dear friend with lupus who suspends because it's pain she has control over for once instead of pain that she never asked for every day. I've done suspensions for folks who were wheelchair users who we suspended chair and all so that they could fly and experience all of the different ways their body was still capable of moving them around. And for many, suspension has a rich cultural and religious background. Suspension is not some hip, cool new thing that the kids these days are doing. It's a practice that has been done in cultures all across the world for thousands of years. 
And that brings us to another really great question that a lot of folks have when they see body suspension, and it's, is body suspension in its current form, the modern suspension community, cultural appropriation? And the answer is yes, it is sometimes. The suspension community does have a long and fraught history filled with issues of cultural appropriation and the taking and profiting off of sacred practices and closed practices from other cultures. There is no one out there who is a practitioner or member of the community who could say in good conscience that the community hasn't struggled with this for years and years. But just because suspension can sometimes be culturally appropriative doesn't mean that it always is. Suspension has been practiced around the world by hundreds of different cultures, some as part of closed intimate rituals belonging to that culture and religion, and others as open celebrated rituals where anyone who was interested in participating was encouraged to join. And just like many issues of cultural appropriation versus cultural appreciation, suspension comes down to the same. For example, suspending from the chest has been done by a number of different cultures all over the world. That being said, certain cultures practices surrounding chest suspensions are unique to those cultures, the most notable being the Mandan Indians of North America. They practice a ritual known as the Okipa, which was a form of chest suspension that was unique to their community and their tribe and had a number of other elements that were involved in that ritual. But they weren't the only community to do chest suspensions. Hundreds of different tribes had variations of either hanging or pulling from the chest, and that's just in North America alone. Chest suspensions and chest pulls also have a rich history across groups in South America India, and Asia. Now, a chest suspension isn't inherently cultural appropriation, but if someone were to call it an okipa or claim that they were doing it as a part of that ritual, if they weren't a member of that tribe and that wasn't a culture they were actively practicing, that would be cultural appropriation. But if someone is not attempting to replicate or steal that specific cultural tradition, if they're using mindful and correct language surrounding it and not trying to pass it off as something it isn't, Chest suspensions were widely practiced by many, many different cultures, and one culture's claim to a version of it as a closed practice does not eliminate other cultures' relationship with that practice. In body suspension, there is a lot of discourse about cultural appropriation and how to practice what we do in a way that is respectful and does not end up taking from any culture or people who also practices suspension. And anyone who is interested in suspension or is a practitioner or facilitator should make it a part of their time to learn about the history of suspension and understand where practices are closed, where practices are opened, and how we practice this respectfully. For me personally, I'm reconnecting with my Brazilian and Peruvian heritage, and I'm incredibly excited to learn more about practices that were sacred to my culture and my people, and learn about ways that I can carry those practices on today and share them with others in my community. Now, back to some of the frequently asked questions. Another one that people really want to know about is, does it leave scars? And yes, of course it does. We're poking sizable holes in our skin to do this. It's going to leave some scars. But the scars are much more minor than people expect. Most folks don't even notice my scars at all. And when they do, they think they're just scars from acne or a blemish. I'm gonna put some pictures of my scars up here, um, but the scars that suspension tends to leave is pretty minor. Now another big question people ask is if they're interested in suspension, how do they go about finding someone to suspend with? And these days that has gotten a little complicated. COVID has meant that most teams have put a halt on public open practices for new suspendees in order to limit spread and keep everyone on the team safe. As restrictions are lifting, some teams are getting back into operation and back into offering suspension sessions, but many are not and they are keeping things more cautious. The Body Suspension Group on Facebook is a very good way to be connected to practitioners near you and see if there's someone in your area currently offering these services. Just like a piercing or a tattoo, please do research into the team you're considering suspending with, look into their credentials, talk to other people who have suspended with them and find out the experiences that they had, and just be very picky about who you choose to do something like a first suspension with. If you're in the tri-state area, Philadelphia, New York, or New Jersey, and you're interested in suspending, I work with Synthesis Suspensions, which is based out of Easton, Pennsylvania, and is currently offering sessions for first-timers. We're booking out till around the middle end of summer at this time. 
If you're interested, you can go to the team Instagram or the website, which I will link here, and send an inquiry to our wonderful team leads, Jeremy and Vicky, about suspension. Also, just go ahead and give them a like and a follow because everyone on my team is legitimately amazing and Jeremy makes some of the most beautiful art with suspension that you have ever seen. I really love body suspension. Is it an experience that is near and dear to my heart? And I can say with full sincerity that I would not be here today and I would not be the person I am without the suspension community and the experiences that I have had through body suspension. This is something that I'm very passionate about and if y'all are interested and would like to see me post more about suspension or even videos of suspensions that I've done here on my channel, go ahead and let me know in the comments. And thank you for letting me share this beautiful, wonderful, amazing thing with you all that is so unbelievably close to my heart and hopefully these comments stay open-minded to suspension and if anyone has any genuine sincere questions please do not hesitate to ask. I would love to answer any and all questions you have about body suspension. Thanks for hanging out and chatting. I know we will sit down and talk soon and I really hope to see and meet some of you in Philly in April on Saturday the 16th for the Oddities Expo. Bye.